Hi everyone, it's Kamil and today we are going to stream cryptocurrency price updates from Binance. Let's start by creating a new umbrella project called Hedgehog. This created base structure for our new project. CD into Hedgehog directory and open editor of your choice. Now, open a new terminal and CD into apps directory to create a new supervised app called Streamer. Let's open a new Firefox window and search for Elixir WebSocket library called WebSocket X. We will use it to connect to Binance WebSocket to stream current prices aka trade events. Its readme gives us instruction on how to use and install it. It requires adding it to the list of your project's dependencies, which we will do right now. Inside Apps, Streamer, Mix EXS, scroll down to the Depths function and paste it in. Now cd one directory app to the main directory of our umbrella app and run mix depths.get to install our new dependency. We can now create a new file called binance.ex to start using the lib. Let's copy across the sample implementation from the readme. This will give us a base to work from. The first step will be to change the module name to match our file path. Next, for convenience, let's define a module attribute which will hold base WebSocket endpoint. We are now going to search for Binance API's README where they describe WebSocket streams and their URLs. We can see that they use stream.binance.com as their base endpoint and row streams are available by appending slash ws slash stream name to the URL. I've copied both of them across. Now we need to look for trades event stream. We can see all the data that it provides for every trade as well as stream name which is the final part of the WebSocket URL. The last thing to do is to glue the stream endpoint together with the stream name. Instead of passing URL to the start link method, we will modify it to accept symbol which will become part of the WebSocket URL. Here we can see an example of using mix format to keep our code consistently formatted. Now a big moment, let's start IEX and give our implementation a spin by running streamer.binance.startlink with two arguments, symbol and anything. Don't worry, we'll refactor this later. Here I'm using Ripple USDT pair but it could be any other one. Just watch out, it needs to be lowercase, otherwise it won't stream and it won't give you any error. Thanks Binance. Getting back to action, we received a tuple with OK Atom and PID of WebSocket process and we can see first logs being printed out. All of those messages are logged because we have IO puts inside handle frame function of our module which will be called for every new message received from WebSocket. Kill the IEX session and remove handle cast function as we won't be using it. Now it's the time to parse messages coming from WebSocket as currently they are just JSON text. To parse JSON we will use JSON module which became de facto standard those days. Installation is the same as for WebSocket X. Just add it to the depths list in mix exs file of your project. To install it the same as previously, we will use mix depths get. 
Readme shows examples of functions with exclamation marks which indicates that they will throw errors instead of returning them, which is less than preferred here. So let's dig into the source code to find out what other functions are there. We can see the code function inside JSON module which calls decoder.parse. Then moving back to the top of the file, alias gives us a hint where the coder comes from. Scrolling down we can see JSON decoder module and parse function inside it. It returns a tuple of either OK atom with data or error atom with error reason. We can now decode JSON message using case statement. From our mini investigation into the code base of JSON module, we know that we can pattern match on the tuple, and based on the contents, we will either call handle event function, which we'll implement in a second, or at this moment, just temporarily throw an error again, this will get refactored later on. Here I would like to point out the value of not being afraid to look into anyone's code base. We can discover interesting ideas and in general reading somebody's code is a skill that needs to be sharpened constantly. It's an integral part of software engineer's job. To implement the handle event function first, we need to create a new structure that will hold the trade events data. Let's create a new module for that. Our struct will have all fields available in the event, but with same field names. Let's copy them across from the documentation and reformat to a bunch of atoms. I've utilized a few handy editor functions here, like lowercasing selection and adding the next occurrence of selected text to the selection, both baked into VS Code editor as standard. Here, beside forgetting about the commas, I wanted to leave this part of the video to showcase how I get quick feedback loop using mixed format. All done and nicely formatted, we have our struct so we can get back to implementing handle event function. Here, to keep our logic simple and focus only on trade events, we will pattern match on the type field of incoming message to make sure it's a trade event. We can now map events fields to our structs fields. The easiest way to do it is to copy structs fields across and assign them one by one. We need to assign the name to the first matched argument which was missed a few moments ago. I've sped up this part of the video as nothing groundbreaking is happening, just text editing. Let's define a name for our new structure and print it out using IO inspect with a nice label.
As our project was compiling, I've seen that there were two warnings. We will take care of them in a second. In the meantime, we can start streaming once again to make sure that we are now getting prints out of our new trade event structures. We can clearly see that expected structs are getting logged out, which means that we have successfully written a basic streaming part of our app. Now, a little bit of tidy up and we can move to other parts of the system. It looks like we have two unused arguments that I left there because they were part of the sample implementation or will get used in the future. For the time being, let's prefix them with underscores. Let's double check that there are no further compilation warnings and everything works fine. And it's done. Works like a charm and probably it's the most over-engineered piece of software that you ever wrote. But there's a purpose for that. What I'm trying to do here is to lay the foundation that we will build, build upon um, to create a fully-fledged cryptocurrency trading bot in Elixir. Stay tuned because I will probably release new episode every week or two and if you like subscribe and leave a comment any comment will be appreciated thanks bye